As you saw in the last episode, this grip gauge measures both shaft tip OD and hosel ID. It comes with a very important illustration showing the clearance needed for, an, for a proper epoxy bond. Take notice of the clearance recommendation for a proper bond, 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters. If you do not have enough space for the epoxy, the head will eventually come off. If you are having to jam a shaft into a head, you'll be forcing the epoxy out. Been there, done that. I got a few heads back from customers, and when I looked into the hosel, there was no epoxy residue. And I came to realize that I had actually pushed the epoxy out when I jammed the shaft into the head. Now, I don't do that anymore. If the gap is too large, the epoxy will eventually break loose and the head will come off. Okay, so 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters. That's a very, very small number. How do you create that precise a gap? Well, there's a simple answer, and it's right here. This is glass beads. Now, I've measured them, and I'm going to show you exactly how I measured them. So what you're looking at right here is a slab of granite that's used in a machine shop with a very, very precise gauge. And when I take this gauge all the way down to the granite top, I'm at zero. Now, this is the solution for making sure that you've got uh, the proper gap between hosel and shaft. These are glass beads. You can buy beaded epoxy, or you can take whatever epoxy you like and put some of this glass bead into the epoxy, and then you mix it up. And when I drop the gauge onto those beads, you will see that I'm at 0.1 millimeters, or 0.1 millimeter, which is the target that we were looking for in our epoxy gap. So when you put glass bead into your epoxy and you get a snug fit into the hosel, you know that you've got the necessary gap for a good epoxy bond. Now, let's look at some other tools for measuring shaft tips and hosel diameters that I've used over the years. This is a grip gauge, and this grip gauge has holes in it for measuring shaft tips. It's called a shaft tip gauge. You can see it there. And so here is 0 .370. That's your parallel shaft, and I've got a parallel rod in my hand. I put it into the hole, and it's a fit. And when I try to put it into the 355, which is your tapered hole, it doesn't fit. So here's my 355 taper shaft. I put it in here, and I can get into it. So here is a taper shaft. It goes into the 355 hole, right, a little ways. Here it goes way too far into the 370 hole. Now, now here is a parallel shaft, and parallel shafts are 370, and you'll see that it goes into the 370 hole, and it slides way up. So what's this all about? Well, you'll know that, that in order to stiffen a parallel shaft, you're going to cut pieces off the tip. So we're looking at exactly how much of this tip we could cut, and it will still fit into this parallel head. You will save assembly time by testing the shaft you're about to glue into a hosel before you apply glue to it. You'll know quickly if it fits or if it's loose. If you do this before you put glue on the shaft tip and the hosel, you won't have to clean them up, fix the problem, and start over. Now here's another tool that I use in the shop from time to time. This is a digital caliper. It's useful mostly by me for measuring shaft tips. So if I clamp it on the shaft tip like this and just kind of tighten it up and let it hang, you can see that this is a .368 shaft. And if I do the same thing here with a tapered shaft, I put it on, and you can see that it is, let me get it in there right, and I push down on it, 353. So you can see that this is a tapered shaft. Machined rod gauges 
your do-it-yourself shaft kit or hosel tip gauge are necessary tools in your shop. Thanks for watching. We're going to move on to other shaft tools in future episodes. As golf club builders and fitters, we need to understand the golf shafts we work with. The most comprehensive source for this knowledge is golf shaft reviews. For a small annual fee, you'll have access to shaft stiffness, torque, weight, and balance data. And, most important, the EI bend profiles. The same bend profiles that are used by golf shaft engineers when they design and manufacture golf shafts. The measurements from my lab let you compare any shaft to any other shaft using the same measurement protocol. Golf Shaft Reviews also offers professional subscriptions that provide more detailed shaft data. If you want to understand golf shafts from the detailed perspective of a golf shaft engineer, take a look at Golf Shaft Reviews.